What's happening, Zebra Nation? This is episode six, season one of our podcast, and we are joined today by Sarah Masterson, our director of our culinary arts program here at RHS, and she is going to speak a little bit about the program, highlights, what's been happening, who's outstanding, what the direction is going to be for next year, so she is going to kick us off with um, giving us a little bit of background about her program. Thanks. Uh, yes, so we have a pretty big program now at the high school for culinary arts, which is super exciting. I have a group of eighth graders every year that is just kind of getting their feet wet, starting to understand what there is to offer in our pathway. Uh, culinary arts is a pathway to graduation, so that's pretty cool that kids can do things that are more hands-on and, and be a part of what's required for graduation. I have uh, two sections of what we call Principles of Culinary Arts and Hospitality, and those kids are the first year in my pathway. They're learning about careers that exist within this world that maybe they're unaware of beyond just your normal chef and cook in a restaurant. And then they also are spending a lot of time in the kitchens. We cook about every week to two weeks in there. Um, they work on things that could be transferred to their home environment, but also that would be super helpful and useful. And we talk about how things are different when you're making things for a commercial setting. And then we have two classes that I have two sections of one and one section of the other that are what we call concentrator classes. So the first of those is a nutrition class. They're starting to understand kind of the nutrients and variety that need to be on a plate. And then my culinary arts class is my most advanced group of kids, and they are just really honing in improving skills in the kitchen. So they spend a lot of time in our kitchens. So I've seen uh, throughout the school year this year that you guys have taken a part in a lot of events around the school and then outside of the school. Uh, one of the highlights being the chili cook-off earlier <laughs> in the fall. Um, so can you explain a little bit about what events you guys have done and um, what kind of dishes you've made for those? Sure. We have been asked to do a lot of catering within the school, which is exciting and a great opportunity for my students to extend their learning beyond the classroom. Uh, we have Mrs. Vance has asked us to prepare um, multiple opportunities to prepare meals and that kind of thing. She had a community ambassadors program this year where uh, kind of distinguished members of the business community in Rochester were part of kind of a focus group where they were discussing relationship between the school and, and the business community. And we made breakfast for them every month. And then we did a, a finished it up with a big lunch for them as well. And then we fed the Kiwanis Club. We have fed, we had the group, the theater group that came in and performed Wonka for our, our littles at Riddle. And we made lunch for them. Um, we have done, like you mentioned, the chili cook-off. The favorites that we have kind of become known for are our French onion soup bombs. Mrs. Vance, that's kind of a, a staple. If she's asked us to cater something, those kind of have to be on the menu. <laughs> They're one of her favorites. And then we've also uh, kind of perfected what we call an apple crisp bite. So that was one of the things that was at breakfast most of the time, which is also another favorite. Awesome. I've also uh, seen through various emails and just uh, different teachers around uh, the corporation uh, purchasing some of your fundraisers for your program. I think the cookies have been a big <laughs> hit, uh, the freezer meals. Um, what were some of your favorite freezer meals that you make that get ordered the most from our staff? Uh, so we did this winter, we did soups and cookies, uh, which was it was fun. It was easy enough for my kids that we could, could pump a lot of those out pretty quickly. We've gotten great feedback on our vegetable soup, which was an exciting one. And like you mentioned, the cookies have been a hit. Um, <clears throat> I learned that my kids are not necessarily as familiar with how to make lasagna. And so <laughs> we tried to do a lasagna one, and that was very labor intensive. <laughs> That's great. Um, I see a lot of the kids, they, they're they very happy when they do these events. They, they, mm -hmm. they show a lot of pride and, and they represent the school very well at everything that they do. So I think it, the culinary department's growing. It's You've done a phenomenal job there. Um, who are some of your students that may want to pursue culinary outside of RHS and that are excelling in your program right now? Uh, as I mentioned, I have a, a class just called Culinary Arts. Those are my most advanced kids. Um, I have nine in there this year. I would say Maddox Jewell is one of my, my kind of kids that I expect to, to pursue something in the food industry after school. Brooke Davis is another one that has really kind of taken a leadership role in that class and, and really honed her skills and 
expressed an interest in continuing beyond. Mackenzie Rose, another one that, again, is kind of stepping into some leadership roles in that class, and I, I really enjoy that. And some of my lower level classes, Andreas Molina is an excellent cook. Um, He has a lot of practice, I think, at home. And it's fun to get a a different cultural perspective from him and and see how things are different, you know, in a dominantly Hispanic household, um, how they season things different. And and he he brings a lot to the class, which is fun. That's great. Um, Last but not least, the senior breakfast is coming up. And the it seniors <laughs> are are dying to know what's on the menu. Like, how long does that take to prep something like that for an event that hosts the families of graduating seniors along with the senior class? And, um, yeah, like, how long does it take to do one of those events? <laughs> that's, that's our biggest event. Um, we feed about 400 people that morning, rough estimate. Um, We have 119 seniors in this year's graduating class and their parents. So it's a big it's a big one. Um, My students do everything. They plan the menu. They figure out what we're going to have. They do all of the prep for that. So we finalized menu last week at the end of last week. And when we we're feeding IU Kokomo's advisory board tomorrow. So once we're done with that. My kids will start working on grocery lists and that kind of thing for the senior breakfast. We'll spend all six of my, well, I should say five of my classes. My eighth graders don't help with that one, but all five of my classes will be making those things. And we'll spend probably a week and a half to two weeks in the kitchens getting everything ready and made. Great. What is, what are you looking forward to for next school year, 24-25? I'm just really excited to see the program continue to grow. Every year, I see more and more catering requests come through, which I love. Um, There's some very early talks of potentially expanding and having hopefully some commercial equipment in the future so that my kids can, can learn how to use that, and it gives us more opportunities for the catering. And just I'm just excited to see where it goes. Great. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it and giving us the insight on the culinary arts department. Thank you for having me.